Can Texas take it to Michigan? Does Arkansas have a shot against Okie State? What about the ranked battle between the Vols and NC State? Time to get the squad together. You're talking ball with the SEC squad. From Alabama to Tennessee, from Georgia to Oklahoma, from Auburn to Texas, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming SEC weekend. It's the SEC squad, and we have a seat for you. Hurt feelings and thin skin are prohibited. Squad up. You're part of the SEC squad. Oh, yeah. Welcome into the SEC squad. Sit back, grab your favorite beverage, and join us as we get you ready for another wild week across the Southeastern Conference. I am Chris Gordy, host of Locked On SEC. Join us. Stephen Willis, host of Locked On Ole Miss. Uh, Clint, host of Locked On Bulldogs. John Miller, Locked On uh, Mizzou. Eric Kane, Locked On Vols. John Neighbors locked on Razorbacks. Chris Marlowe locked on Gamecocks. Jonathan Davis locked on Longhorns. Jay Smith locked on Sooners. And Corey Burton locked on Vandy. That was our roll call. We're all here. And, guys, what a week it was in SEC Week 1 as the conference goes 13-3. and three. It's all in how you spin it, though. Some other folks saying, no, they only won three out of their four big games, however you want to spin it. But we got some big ones happening this week. And, guys, uh, let's get into it as we have uh, an awesome slate of games and uh, first, I want to give a little roses to our guy, Corey Burton, locked on Vandy. Corey, I don't think anybody had, uh, other than Chris Marler, I think, gave uh, Vandy. Yeah, Chris, Virginia. shout out Chris. Vandy over Virginia Tech. Maybe Stephen Willis. Jay well. also brought it up. Yeah. Jay, shout out right, so maybe, maybe a few of us were taking Vandy. I um, mm-hmm. didn't get to the sports book in time to get the bet in, but shout out to uh, Vandy. Corey, we'll give you 30 seconds off the top to take your roses. Well, man, Diego Pavia, I, I think everybody's learning – how great he is. Uh, that that was an incredible performance, something that I saw coming from a mile away because of uh, what he did in New Mexico State and uh, what he did to poor Zach's uh, Auburn team last year. Um, we, uh, man, the defense played aggressively. They had identity. That, that was probably the most physical, fast, aggressive Vanderbilt team that I've seen in quite some time. So um, it was really, really good to see. Okay. I was, you were just about out of time. That was all the time we could allocate to Vanderbilt conversation this week. But <laughs> great win. And let's see if they can get more. Look, if they can take care of business next two weeks, we're talking about a 3 0 Vandy team going into Mizzou Whoa, with a chance know. to pull off a monster upset in a few weeks. So we'll no, certainly okay. get to that one here. Mizzou, you next. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> well, let's get to this one first, guys, because I see our buddy John Neighbors is here, host of Lockdown Razorbacks. And guys, um, Arkansas, big one. They are on the road. They are underdogs at Oklahoma State. I think sitting at about a seven and a half point underdog at FanDuel. John, how are we feeling? Hogs looked really good. What was it, 70 points you scored? I mean, the offense looks good. Bobby Petrino's back. How are we feeling? Well, uh, my old phrase of coining Hogs by 90 almost came true. Uh, honestly, if they would have, but see, Arkansas is a classy program. They they just had the quarters run out five minutes early before they destroyed like you other classless programs. But that's fine. Uh, but here's the thing. Arkansas and Oklahoma State, this is pretty, pretty much the biggest game of the year for Sam Pittman. I think most people have felt that way because mm-hmm. if Arkansas wins this game. They're basically going to be 3-0 heading into a road game against Auburn. If they lose this game, they're already way behind the eight ball. And it's going to be hard to come out of it, especially if they're trying to get to postseason play. So this one's a huge one. I think Razorback fans feel pretty confident. I mean, you score 70 and you allow the other team to score zero. I don't care who it is, especially if you're a Razorback fan. Hasn't happened very often. So the fact that you got it gives you a little bit of confidence, but there's no doubt that it's going to be a really tough match and a really tough game for Sam Pittman. It's going to be a lot of fun to see what Arkansas does. And uh, let me jump to each of you guys real quick this segment. Just ask you to make a quick prediction about your team and your game. doesn't have to be a score prediction, but just something you're looking to see from your team this weekend. Steven, we'll start with you. I want to see if Jackson Dark can have a first half the way he had against Furman, essentially. Fun fact, on that Furman game, they asked him, if Lane Kiffin, if he wanted to go short quarters or a running clock in the second half, and Lane Kiffin said no. <laughs> well, shout out to Furman. I heard they just got an invite up to 4A in high school, so uh, good, uh, <laughs> good for them. Clint, uh, prediction for the Bulldogs this week. We're going to see more freshmen than we did last week against Clemson play out this week because of the opponent. But you're going to see guys like Justin Williams. If you don't know the name, go ahead and get used to it because he showed out a little bit. You're going to go guys like that who are 17, 18 year old kids who are going to completely tell you that the next three years are going to be run by Georgia and you're going to get sick of it. And I don't even care. All right. He's been doing that for 42 years, though. So, I mean, after this year, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a prediction on Mizzou. 
Well, Missouri, big favorites against Buffalo. Tigers start off the Corey Batoon era as defensive coordinator with a shutout against Murray State. Like to see more good defense this week. Also, if there's one thing to complain about offensively, Brady Cook a little too strong on some of his deep shots. I think that was just maybe a little early season thing. Dial it in. We'll see in week two. John, you say that. I watched Joe Milton play football last year, so you know, we all said that week one, week two, but it's something that falls. There's a little bit of an arm difference uh, there between Brady Cook and Joe Milton, but knee. fair enough, fair enough. He's on a knee. He could chuck that thing to the opposite side of the field. Which 90 is very- yards. He can Jamarcus throw an orange Russell, at 180 do, yards. Come on. Do y'all, do y'all know the greatest Joe Milton joke ever? Do it. Hit us, if you need a quarterback to throw the ball 40 yards, Joe Milton can throw a ball 40 yards. If you need a quarterback to throw it 10 yards, Joe Milton can throw the ball 40 yards. Every time. Yeah. It's very true. And as we know, in the NFL, they're at, they ask you a lot of times to, to get on your knees and throw it 80 yards. It happens Absolutely. all the time in the NFL. All the time. Right. Er- Eric, give me Marcus thought. Russell is an all-time great. <laughs> Sometimes they exactly. get orange to throw. <laughs> Eric, give me a thought on the uh, the Vols and my Heisman pick, Nico Iamaliava. The orange went over 100 yards, by the way. Uh, yeah, Tennessee. Western Carolina had nine TFLs against NC State last week. They were leading NC State into the fourth quarter. I think NC State's going to play much better. But if Western Carolina got nine TFLs against NC State, Tennessee's defensive line is going to get at least 13 or 14. No joke. Uh, Tennessee by two scores. I think Casey Concepcion is going to get Tennessee's defense a whole lot of issues. But I like Tennessee by two scores against NC State. Neutral field. Um, hopefully they don't bring out the mayonnaise, though. That's kind of gross. Corey, don't know a ton about Alcorn State, but give me a prediction for Vandy this week. Well, Vandy has got some things uh, offensively that they can still work on. Vertical passing game. Um, and continue to improve the, the option game with Pavia and the running back. So just looking to get a little bit stronger um, as they uh, get ready for uh, Georgia State the following week and Missouri uh, as their first conference game. Corey, it's good to know that Vanderbilt still has some things to work on after that win. Good to <laughs> yes, know. Yeah. I thought they were a finished product. <laughs> they hey, are. We, if they win this yeah. week, we call that a winning, a winning streak. I mean, that's winning that's pretty impressive for Vanderbilt. Yeah, well, honestly, 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 the most free money thing in the history of free money was Vandy over two and a half wins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, tell you. I, oh, I, yeah. I, the on that one. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I took that one, too. I was in Louisiana. That one is definitely one that you wanted to lay hands on because, again, that, that was free money. Oh, wait till they lose at Georgia State. Then we'll all be sweating that one out until the end of the year. Jay Smith, <laughs> give me a prediction for the Sooners this week. Fun fact for the Sooners, we held um, Temple to under 200 yards. First time we've done that since 2017, the first year we had Lincoln Riley. That's why if you wonder why, you know, people have some angst with Lincoln. So my prediction in this game, another under 200-yard game allowed. Defense goes out there and dominates. A drink or a call a therapist every time Jay brings up Lincoln Riley. Yeah. That, that, that's almost a drinking. It's game. a drinking game, guys. What are you doing? Come on now. You're failing me. Good thing. He didn't say tell how bad of a defense you've had since those times. He's right. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Fritz was great at Tulane. It's going to take him a while to get going there at Houston. Jonathan Davis, you got a big one. We're going to preview that one in a little bit, but give me a prediction for Texas this week. Right. So many SEC teams playing absolute scrubs this weekend. Right. But Texas this weekend proves they are who we think they are. Right. Since both teams have played this past weekend, we've seen the spread jump from minus three and a half to Texas favored by seven and a half on the road in the big house. No Jim Harbaugh. No J.J. McCarthy. No Connor Stallions. The Longhorns exposed the Wolverines this weekend on the road. We're waiting on it. Yeah. Texas needs to take care of business or else Danny Cannell is going to look like Randy from South Park. (laughs) <laughs> Let's go up to Chris Marler. Uh, man, Old Dominion. Didn't see that one coming, but the Gamecocks got it done. What? Give me a prediction for the Gamecocks this week. Emotionally, they did not, uh, Gordy. That is one thing that is for sure. Uh, I'll tell you what, it's going to be hard to win every week if, left, if you only can get two turnovers inside of their own 10-yard line, which is what they managed to do and still only pull out a four-point win over Old Dominion. I will say this, Old Dominion, in their last two years, they played four power power opponents. They've won one of them, and two of the other three, they only lost by three or less points. So pretty elite company uh, for South Carolina. I think that uh, they're going to need a lot of help, and they're going to need Lenora Sellers to calm the blank down uh, if they go to Lexington to get a win. Looks yeah. real bad. Yeah, Lenore's dropping down our SEC quarterback rankings very quickly after week one. Uh, see if he can rebound. John Neighbors, quick uh, just prediction for – Arkansas this week, not on the game score, but just prediction for the for what the uh, Razorbacks uh, can do this. Maybe Andrew Armstrong, is he back? 
Oh, I, I, I think he will be. But in the words of my hero, Bobby Petrino, that was fun. We didn't come to paint. We came to win. And that's what Arkansas is going to do in this game. They're going to win this one. And honestly, it might be between the battle of who you'd rather have a couple of cold beers and have a smoke a couple of heaters with Mike Gundy and Sam Pittman going at it. But I like Sam Pittman. He's cooler. He's more fun and he's more entertaining. So that yeah, reason alone. He doesn't drive either. So that's no, nice. That's true. He doesn't. He doesn't drive and uh, he likes to hang out. But no, I actually think Arkansas wins this game. I really do because I'm an idiot. And they'll probably be, have a great high scoring game over in the Big 12. But Hogs get it done. And then Razorback fans feel really good for a second until their heart gets sucked out of their body once again at some point. So, so just what? to be clear, you're you're no longer looking for new coaches on LinkedIn jobs for Sam Pittman's replacement or well, yeah, you tabled well, that or I mean Rhett Lashley lost it, so he's out. Uh so yeah, there's a few of them that were in the mix, but no. Uh isn't he on the roster now? I mean on the coaching staff now? Uh no, I don't think the next coach. Barry Odom's coach? off to a good start. Yeah. It's like UNLV. There could be a few of other ones. Aren't, yeah. you, aren't you wearing the shirt of the person that's next oh, star? Exactly. The one that's just going to get the job is already on your was on your chest right now. So. It ain't happening. It ain't happening because you know why? Bobby Petrino does not do NIL, so it's not happening. Well, before John tells us what his T-shirt stands for, we're going to end this segment. Gentlemen, it's always a pleasure. Coming up next, let's dive deeper into Texas and Michigan and the Vols and NC State, the SEC squad. Talking more ball next. We'll get back to the squad here in just a second. But first, you have heard us talk a lot about FanDuel. They are America's number one sports book. And well, we got something a little bit different for you going on right now. Now, through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you're going to be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market NFL game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. Of course, FanDuel, they are America's number one sports book. You can go check them out right now at FanDuel.com. And they got some great action up there. They got lines coming in this weekend. If you like some of the underdogs, if you like Arkansas at Oklahoma State, they're uh, you know sitting at about uh, over a touchdown underdog. Take Arkansas the points. If you think they can pull it off, they got it all up there for you at FanDuel. Go take advantage of that special offer. Again, a free three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV with a $5 bet at FanDuel. The SEC squad rolling on here as we're getting into week two action, and we want to dive deeper into some of these matchups happening this weekend. So let's jump into it as we talk Texas and Michigan. It is the reigning national champs with all they lost, and they didn't look great in the first game of the season. Texas did, whooping up on Colorado State, but how are we feeling, gents, as the Longhorns, are they the real deal? This is a great opportunity for them early in the season to go on the road and get a tough victory in a hostile environment. I like the idea. I like this thing um, because if Texas can fit man up and stop the run against Michigan, it's the chance they can win this game by a couple scores. If Michigan run, can run the football, it's going to be a really tight football game. Yeah, Texas is in a bad position because Michigan is down. They have they have to go in there. They have to beat up. They're the favorite on the road. And there's a real chance that Michigan does that and runs right through them and gives the blueprint because I don't think Texas is particularly tough down the middle of their roster. And so I, I actually think Texas is in a in a kind of a lose lose. They got to blow them out to really go ahead and cement themselves as favorites. If not, uh, people are going to be saying that's not the Michigan of last year. That's not the Michigan of old. And they got, could get dogged on. It's still a capable Michigan team, though. Like, if they go in and win by eight points, like if the final score is 28 to 20, is anyone really going to look at that outcome and say, oh, Texas is fraudulent, they beat Colorado State, and that doesn't mean anything, it's an inferior opponent? Far be it from me as an Oregon guy to crap on beating up on inferior opponents because apparently that's a lot harder than it looks sometimes, everybody. But I, I, I like Texas in this spot. I think they're a much more complete team. Michigan's trying to figure things out. And at the very least, I think Michigan's offensive line or Texas's offensive line rather can handle and not get dominated by Michigan's defensive front, which is among the best in college football. I'm sorry, this Neighbor, game's in Ann Arbor, right? Bag on them. Yes, this it game is, this game, yeah, this yeah. Game is so, in I mean, Ann Arbor. It, since when is going on the road to a place like that ever going to be, you know, win by eight or nine points and it's not even... I mean, come on, just go get the win. Like, I understand Michigan's down a little bit, but I mean, that's, that's going to be a tough road game. I mean... 
Just go up there, find a way to win, get the win, and then regroup. I mean, I, I, will, I will say this. It's, you know, it, it, look, we enjoy the SEC because we get night games. The stupid Big Ten, this is the dumb big noon kickoff, so it's an early game. It'll be loud, but it wouldn't be as loud and rocking as a night game with a full day of tailgating. But, Jonathan, sounds like hearing Steve Sarkeesian this week, he likes the early games. Yeah, you know, uh, he said he likes, you know, it being a morning operation, whatever that means. But, you know, when you look at it, Michigan being the number 10 team in the country, I think they're still getting a little bit too much credit for, you know, who they were last year, right? Like when you look at this football team and what they did against Fresno State, less than five yards per attempt in terms of passing, almost all of their passing yards going to the tight end, their best player in Donovan Edwards, 13 touches for 27 yards. I really just don't see a path to victory for this Michigan team. I mean, like Clint said, you know, you're – I guess Michigan is hoping they could just go out there and run for 200 yards and just keep this Texas offense off the field. But I think Texas has too many ways to attack them on offense and their defense is elite, right? You got those two big defensive tackles up front, both their edges are both graded, you know, over 90 by pro football focus, but that defense can only take so many three and outs by the offense, right? Like all, you know, Pete Kukowski and this Texas defense has to do is just force them to throw the ball and they cannot match Texas score for score. So, you know, like I said, you go in there, you try to win by, you know, one point, 10 points, whatever. But like I said, Michigan is not the 10th best team in the country, and Texas will expose them this weekend. It's going to be interesting. Quick raise of hands. Anybody going to take Michigan in the upset? Okay, John Neighbors. No. <laughs> got, John's uh, all in the upset train. By the way, can I, uh, John, while we uh, are raising your, your hand here, uh, you, you think the Razorbacks are going into Stillwater and walking away with a victory? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's college football, man. That's and that's the thing. That's I suppose really I've seen crazier things happen. I, I'm raised, honestly, it's the only reason I raised my hand for Michigan to beat Texas. It's not because I'm like, oh, Michigan's a better team. And let me break no, down the depth chart here and why the linebackers are going to do. Like, no, it's college football. It's chaos, man. It is chaos. So well, if you have a yeah. chance to bet on chaos, take chaos. That's exactly yeah. right. And let's not act like Oklahoma State's some world beater. It's like, you know, Mike Gundy's been a no, good coach there. But it's no, not like I mean, I, I've, I've been relatively down on Oklahoma State compared to others. I don't think they're going to sniff the Big 12 championship game. They have Alan Bowman at quarterback, for goodness sake. They are a tough team to beat at home. And look, I, I can I can appreciate the home cooking there, I, I suppose, a little bit, John. I, I just feel like going on the road to pick up that win would certainly be a potential job saver for Sam Pittman, but he lost the U- UCF forty-five to three last year. I'm taking the Hogs on the road. Raise your hand if you got the Hogs winning at Oklahoma State this week. One, yeah, they two, stop, they three. They stop Ollie Gordon. They got low for the Big what? Twelve, I guess. All hell, my guy. <laughs> All right, four to three. We got we got the Hogs pulling off the upset. One more game to talk about this segment, guys. It is uh, the Vols and NC State over there in Charlotte, Bank of America Stadium. Eric uh, Nico Yamaliava. A lot of people talking about him as a Heisman contender after week one. I know it was Chattanooga, but a good opportunity here to go beat a good NC State team. Yeah, really good opportunity for Tennessee for for Nico. Um, He torched Iowa's defense in the bowl game. He torched Chattanooga. Um, I have an opportunity to see what he does against NC State. Then you get into SEC play and we'll see how good Nico is, but uh, no reason to slow down that hype train. I think that um, he's got all the tools, um, explosive plays back in this offense. I think in the game overall, I mean, NC State played 19 players defensively and squeaked out a win over Western Carolina. Tennessee played 30 players in the first quarter defensively. I mean, Tennessee's going to do that again. They're just going to wear them down. And that's why I think Tennessee on the road to Oklahoma in a couple weeks is going to be an issue there for the Sooners. But I'm excited to see Nico play. I think Tennessee wins this by two scores. Yeah, Anybody we look- like- Good. Yeah, when you look at Nico, you know, he looked like a quarterback that's ranked at the top of his class is supposed to. I mean, he's looked like a superstar, you know, essentially since he stepped on the field. And like Eric, I think that continues again this Saturday. I think Tennessee wins comfortably. Yeah, the Tennessee, I, Eric, you you could tell us all if I'm wrong or not, but I'm actually more impressed with the front seven of Tennessee. I, yeah. I've said this on our podcast. I think the best front seven that Georgia will play all year long is Tennessee. It wasn't Clemson from this last week. It's going to be Tennessee. It's not Bama. And I think that is going to carry him. When you get a quarterback that can play like that with the front seven of Tennessee, you're in every single game from yeah. here on out. That's why I think Tennessee is dangerous. And I think they're going to handle NC State handily. Yeah, I, I kid you not. Rodney Garner, defensive line coach, veteran SEC assistant coach, he goes three deep across the board on the defensive line. Literally, three deep, and they all play. I mean, James Pierce will be out there a lot, but they all play. So uh, I think that's going to you know, pay dividends in a game like this and you know, down the line as well. Anybody taking former Drake tight end Dave Doran to pull off the upset of, of the Vols this week? I love that nugget, Gordy, but not 
enough <laughs> to to go with NC State. Look, I, I have uh, argued many a times with Vols fans about uh, the danger that this game it's poses. Fans don't like to argue on social media. What are you talking about? Oh, that's a good point. It must it's have been an anomaly or something. All the way yes. through, in person and online. Oh gosh, down the comment section. They that's where you find, yes, I yes, think, uh, a, a a future Nobel Prize laureate. But I, I think that for for NC State. They've got to show up way more than they did last week. It was an unimpressive week one performance. Grayson McCall had moments, but as a team, they'll have to play a complete game. I, I am not ruling out NC State in this game. I don't think Tennessee goes in and steamrolls them by you know, 15 to 20 points. Can they cover that number, which has jumped up to eight? That that that's a lot. I could see this being kind of a 27-21 sort of uh, affair because I do think NC State is incredibly capable. I like Dave Dorn a, as a head coach a lot. I lean towards the Vols. I don't know if my final score prediction will have them covering that that number that has jumped up three and a half points since last week. Gordy, I know we got to go. That but out the door, Tennessee's got to find a way to shut down number ten Concepcion. He is going to line up all over the field. Yeah, he will give Tennessee player. linebackers issues. I think NC State, as the year goes on offensively, will turn out to be pretty good. They're, they're just not there yet. And Tennessee's a much more veteran-led team, even with a young quarterback. So, uh, uh, yeah, that line's jumped up big time. I mean, I think Tennessee, by two touchdowns in this game, is just – I, I kind of have that feeling. So, I guess we'll see. Well, the Grace. one thing that gives me pause is the fact that did NC State last week, were they already preparing for Tennessee? Yeah, and just so. completely overlooked, and you're going to get a different team. But I don't think it's going to matter because that's an explosive offense, and I don't yeah. know if NC State can score with them. Great stuff, gents. Coming up next is Houston at OU, a trap game. Will Kentucky beat South Carolina? The SEC squad is talking more ball next. Back to the squad here in just a second, but first I want to remind you guys this episode presented to you by friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. When you are hiring – for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. And that's why you got to go check out our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. They have the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn is not just another job board. They're going to help you fi find professionals and hire them that you can't fire, find anywhere else, even though those who are not, are not actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking for on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Go hire professionals like a professional over at LinkedIn Jobs. Go post your job for free. Right now, it's linkedin.com slash locked on college. It's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Go post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Let locked on jobs take care of all the dirty work for you. Roll along here, here on our Locked On SEC squad, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. And guys, we got a couple more games to get into. And Jay Smith, we will start with you. It is Oklahoma hosting Houston. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but. You know, Willie Fritz was a nice coach at Tulane. He beat USC in the bowl game, and it was a great coach, but things not going well at Houston. They used to lose to Barry Odom and UNLV in week one, but anything to worry here about uh, Houston and OU? Well, it appears that Donovan Smith still has a shoulder problem that I think he had going through the summer and in the spring, and it's lingering, and it looked like it when he was throwing the ball. So if he's not able to throw the ball, he's not going to be able to use his legs because they're going to be prepared for that portion of it, and it's funny the spread open in that game at like 26, it's ballooned to 30. And I'm going to be honest, I expect it to go to 35. I think the Sooners are going to blow them out. The defense should do enough to keep Donovan Smith off the field. Uh, Willie's going to have to, he's got a whole, he's going to have to take a whole year to rebuild this roster. It's not looking good for him right now. Yeah, I like what we saw in week one with uh, Jackson Arnold and, and, you know, getting on the page with the receivers. Uh, anybody, uh, like what they saw from Oklahoma? Anybody a little still doubting Oklahoma this year? I mean, they had I six turnovers, which is incredible. Like, I mean, like it's one of those things. I don't think they're going to be able to do that every single weekend. But anytime you can come out like that, like I mean, the number, like on the scoreboard, it obviously pops because I think Jay, didn't you say last week that they were going to outscore Temple on defense alone? Yeah, Pretty that was the that was the expectation. Yeah. <laughs> the expectation was that, like I said, six turnovers. Four of them were fumbles. Now, right. what's funny, fun fact, we only had six fumble recoveries all of last season. Yeah. We got four of those in this game, and it was all because of hard hits. It wasn't trying to strip the ball. It yeah. was it was literal tackles that ended up in punches and the ball just flying out. So 
I think this defense has ramped itself up to where their goal is to get as many turnovers as possible for the second year in a row. You know, I thought Oklahoma, if you really look under the hood offensively, they weren't all that impressive last week. I know that no. the final score was impressive. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jay. I believe the Sooners for one of 12 on third down. I still mm-hmm. think there's a lot to work on in Norman. Yeah, one of the things that Brent Venables mentioned was is that because we had short yardage every just about every possession because of all the turnovers, they, were just, they knew they were going for it on fourth. So okay. I'm going to be honest. They basically played a scripted game. Mm-hmm. I hated it pissed me off but i understood they wanted to see what things look like in situations that you cannot replicate in fall camp right if your linebackers and your secondary knows what the play is it's kind of hard for you to test things out so they did it against a team that one they knew they were going to blow out two that had no clue what the plays were and unfortunately ran a script so hopefully against houston we don't do that but because of how bad houston is i think we might do it again (laughs) <laughs> you, you you have to look at this game and think it's the opposite of a trap game. Guys, Houston could go 0-12 this year. That is a legitimate yeah. possibility. I picked UNLV to beat them in week one. I didn't think they were going to beat them by three possessions in Houston. You, they, they don't have an FCS game on their schedule this year. They're going to get blasted by Oklahoma and everybody else. It. I, I think Willie Fritz is a really good coach, and, and he could do well at Houston. It's not going to happen quickly. They are going to bottom out hard this year. This is, an, this is a reverse trap game. The Uno reverse card of a trap game for, for Oklahoma here, I, I think they absolutely steamroll the Cougars. What about Rice? Spencer, they, they will beat Rice. They will win the Bayou Bucket. All right, I'm going to give right, oh, that. Whoa, 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 whoa. What was Rice's record in 2023? Uh, yeah, that's they it. were a bowl game. They, they were, were a, they were, they were a bowl they team. A bowl you team. watched Houston on Saturday. <laughs> they look like a bowl team. No. Well, it, you only have to win one, and this is a rivalry that runs deep. Anytime you we can should talk about anything else, guys. Or a Bayou Bucket. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. What are we doing, like, what are we doing right now? It Thank is you. the SEC versus SEC, the first SEC versus SEC matchup of the season. Maybe not the sexiest matchup. It's Kentucky playing host to South Carolina. And, Marler, we kind of got your thoughts earlier on what you saw from South Carolina last week. They survived the pit that was Old Dominion, but – uh, going on the road, man, this line has moved. It was around a touchdown before the season, and now it's a double digits, 10, 10 and a half over at FanDuel. Um, man, maybe us against the world mentality for for uh, Shane Beamer? We should talk about literally anything else again. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, it, honestly, it's 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 tough because like you won two in a row up your South Carolina Um but, you know, you date back before the eight previous seasons, and you won one of, one of eight before that. So it's been a tough – um, series for them in general. I, listen, I think Lenora Sellers is good, is the key to this whole thing. You don't want to point the finger and blame them for everything because there was a lot of blame to be passed around. I think on offense, especially the receivers didn't help them out at all. There was no separation. The run game was pretty not great. I think they averaged around three or 3.2 yards per, per rush. But Lenora Sellers was really, really bad. And if you look at what they did on third down, especially like you thought that was an offensive line that was going to be able to like get some push and, and create short yard situations. In the first half alone, on, on third downs, there was third and eight or longer in six of the seven third downs they had. And the ones that Spencer or Lenora Spell, uh, Sellers was responsible for, he was over three, passing the football. He had negative nine total yards of offense on third downs in the first half. It was a really, really bad first game for him. Well, can I just throw uh, this in here? Like, I've said this for a long time, and when South Carolina hired him, I tried to tell everybody, Dow Loggins, who's a Razorback, he ain't it. And so I don't bad. know why they hired him. He was in the NFL. Oh, he's the NFL offense coordinator. Yeah, the coordinator of the Jets and the Titans when they right. signed. Right. Yeah. Great. So I mean, when y'all hired him, that was – I knew that was going to be a disaster from the get-go. I Honestly, the, I don't want to sound like a massive, you know, Alex Jones conspiracy theorist here in the tip, but I will put on the tin foil hat for this. I, I think that at some point this season, Sean Elliott will end up calling plays and Dallas Loggins will be out of the door. I, I just I – just, I, I fully believe it because at this point it's like – you saw it after one game against Old Dominion. It was just so bad. Yeah. I had some film come across my desk that I'm actually going to send it to the SEC office. Um, I need this Dylan Stewart kid suspended. This freshman is way too good. I do not like the fact that he's able to destroy edges the way that he's doing yeah. it. Tackles. No, I, I, I have issues with you, Chris, for this. You did that's not that's warn me. You did not warn me about this dude. Why would you not tell me about him earlier? He's a five star. Dude, I, I don't what, care. I kept saying he's all, not a five all. star. He's a seven star. I'm watching yeah. him move. I've never seen dudes get that low and still have the burst 
person's speed. No, this is yeah. ridiculous. He's he's injecting something. I am I'm reporting it. Dude, it's, the bend around the edge that kid has and the speed he has, it's been really impressive. Absurd. The defense has the potential, in my opinion, to be like a, a top five to a top half of a, the SEC type of defense like they, they really are good up front it's just that offense really is good. quickly <laughs> so I, good. I just think it's a week one overreaction I, I actually think marler's being a little bit negative i think south carolina can absolutely win this game what are we talking about so one week they play they look like crap against old dominion i just heard the previous segment we were all talking up hey old dominion aren't they great well maybe maybe the game talks can actually bounce back here it's one week where's the evidence that kentucky is great is my opinion well, i'm not sure what to make true. of them yet i'll give the counter here because uh, i'm probably the only person here who watched kentucky southern miss last week but kentucky didn't even finish the whole game they had the two-hour lightning delay and then they had another lightning delay and they said let's just scrap the game but they accomplished a lot in two and a third quarters uh, of a game before they called it. I mean, you know, Brock Vandergrift threw three touchdowns. Barry and Brown looked good. Dane Key looked good. Defense looked great. Two two interceptions. J.J. Weaver had a sack. I mean, Kentucky got a lot accomplished. I get it was Southern Miss, but, like, they didn't even play a whole game, and they put up some nice numbers. So, I think they're at home. Kroger Field, they're looking to make a statement. They, they lost to Shane Beamer in South Carolina last year because they had the quarterback injury. I think they want to make a statement, and that's why they're a double-digit favorite right now. Good point. And that's way more negative than what I said, John. <laughs> yeah, well, I should I should definitely jump through the Zoom and choke him for sure. <laughs> All right, Alex, so let's go. As we wrap up, just a quick hitter. Uh, is South Florida give Alabama any trouble? No. I love that South Florida no. is, is all over Bama Twitter right now. It is yes. it's hilarious. And I will say this, and for any for any Georgia fans that are lurking, let's be very clear because they are those two fan bases are already at it and at each other's throats. South Florida played Alabama a lot closer last year for 60 minutes than Georgia ever did. So let's be very clear about that for any Georgia fans that are that are still lurking around. Yeah, it's not also going to be a man- monsoon, so I think that actually kind of helps Alabama in this game. I mean, sure. playing in a monsoon is pretty tough. Yeah. Also, Chris, I think that your statement on Georgia not being as close to Alabama as South Florida was is true. If you remove the times where Georgia beat Alabama, I, I suppose that that's that 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 tracks. Did you, did you say times? Time, OK, the one the one that's time. happened one time in the last okay. 15 years. The one the one time that they beat Alabama. I'm just I'm just saying. Huh? The Chris other Marler, our resident happens. Georgia fan. I, mean, I love Spencer, it. I, I totally get what you're saying, but if you're going to say plurals and we're going to talk in like literal facts, I mean, it's been one time. <laughs> okay, okay, years. foul. Okay, foul. So, foul, I mean, foul. Misstep on my part. The uh, the ultimate wild card, Mississippi State, Jeff Levy, they look good. Yeah. It was Eastern Kentucky. Anybody taking them to win on the road at Arizona State? I don't even know what Arizona State is. They're, oh, they're yeah, not. they're going to win that game. Jeff Levy's going to go out there and just. No, they're not. They're going to win that game. No, love not. it. Mississippi no, State. Not. Kenny Dillingham, year two. Jeff Levy, year one. Sam Levitt does enough for Arizona State to win that game against Mississippi State. They have never beaten an SEC team in Tempe. That changes this week. Wow. Well, we love it. We'll be watching. We'll see what happens this weekend. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. The SEC squad will be back next week here on the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. Reminder, follow and subscribe to your favorite SEC show. We'll be covering your favorite teams every day throughout the season. Don't forget, I've got you covered for the entire conference every day with Locked On SEC, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day.